So to the ESCAPE project, which gathers air pollution data across 17 different European countries and looks at the effects of particular matter and nitrates on human health. And in a study produced for the Lancet Oncology, we were examining whether this air pollution leads to a greater risk of particular types of lung cancer. Earlier today, I was able to speak to one of the contributors, Professor Benes, and then Dr. Helga Laszlo about future directions for the research. Tell us a little bit about uh, the study that you conducted and what some of the main findings were. Yeah, uh, the main finding is that we find uh, a, <clears throat> an excess risk of lung cancer in people exposed to levels of air pollution, which are about the same or, or even lower than the acceptable um, levels of, of pollution in the air. <clears throat> um, we see an 18% uh, uh, increase of lung cancer um, associated with uh, each uh, uh, 5 microgram per cubic meter of PM2.5, which is, uh, uh, well, I would say interesting, particularly because uh, um, the histological type which is affected uh, is adenocarcinoma. Uh, that is um, a type of lung cancer which is increasing uh, in time uh, relative to the other uh, histological types. On the face of it, that would seem to be quite a worrying finding. Well, in a way it is, uh, um, because uh, uh, what we observe, as I said, uh, is at the same levels as uh, the acceptable uh, threshold limits, uh, limits for air pollution, which have been set at uh, 25 micrograms uh, per um, cubic meter for PM2.5 uh, and 40 for PM10. Um, so basically, uh, we have to reduce uh, air pollution levels uh, uh, more than we have done. I, I would say that, uh, well, the, the message is uh, mixed because uh, uh, on one side, uh, uh, qualitatively, uh, air pollution has changed. Uh, on the other side, uh, uh, quantitatively, it has decreased, uh, uh, particularly from the 60s. Uh, so we have a different air uh, due to technological changes in engines. Um, we, we have now a mixture of particles, uh, um, uh, ultrafine particles, uh, uh, nitrogen oxides, uh, which is different from what we observed uh, in the 60s and the 70s. And this may justify uh, the different uh, association we, we observe uh, with uh, uh, this particular uh, uh, histological type, uh, which has been increasing, as I said, compared to uh, squamous cell carcinoma, which is more typical of smokers whereas adenocarcinoma is observed in uh, non-smokers. Non so, how does your study compare with uh, other studies that have been done into the same subject? This is uh, uh, relatively new for several reasons. First, it is very large. Uh, we have observed uh, uh, 300,000 people. Uh, second, uh, it, is, uh, it covers uh, uh, a large number of areas in Europe. Uh, so we have uh, a, a wide range of uh, levels of exposure and also qualitatively these areas uh, um, differ. Uh, third, we have uh, uh, quite good information about confounders. Uh, we have uh, very detailed information about smoking, so we were able to adjust for smoking habits. And well, then probably the, the most interesting uh, feature of the study is that we had uh, real measurements and uh, based on this, uh, uh, we built uh, uh, what is called uh, land use regression models. In other words, uh, we uh, used uh, jointly uh, our measurements in the air, in the areas uh, uh, involved in, in the study, with a number of other variables that predict uh, the uh, exposure level at the individual level. What, what are the limitations, your study, what are some of the limitations of uh, your study? A lot of interesting findings, but what are some of the limitations? Well, I would mention a couple of limitations. Uh, uh, one is that uh, uh, most of uh, air pollution uh, uh, estimates uh, um, are based on current or recent uh, uh, exposures. Um, back extrapolation is a, is a problem. Uh, we are relatively confident in our back extrapolation, which goes back to the 80s, uh, but still this is a, a methodological problem. Uh, the other issue is uh, um, the difficulty of disentangling the effect of different pollutants, uh, like uh, nitrogen oxides versus particles, though we don't find anything with uh, nitrogen uh, oxides. Uh, 
uh, but still uh, they are in a way correlated to, uh, to particles. Uh, Dr. Laszlo, how is your research going to move forward from here? We know that 90% of the diseases are caused by environmental occupational exposures um, as well as um, uh, lifestyle factors, but we don't really understand the underlying uh, mechanism. Um, in order to improve our risk estimates um, and provide uh, better preventative measures, we need to understand the cause, we need to understand how much we are exposed to. The exposome is a new concept that basically aims to capture uh, all sorts of exposure uh, over a lifetime. Um, the, the new study, the new EU-funded study, Exposomics, um, is based on this concept and is led by Imperial College. We, we are going to develop and use novel techniques such as smartphones um, in order to uh, capture uh, personal exposure and then we can uh, link these uh, exposure data using omics technologies that basically uh, we measure thousands of molecules in uh, body fluid. We can link these um, uh, data um, together and uh, see uh, what kind of changes they uh, introduce in our body, in our genetics, in our uh, mental and, and physical health. Where we hope that this uh, very powerful tool will help us to identify new uh, biomarkers and improve uh, prevention and preventative medicine.